My name is Elias Theodoro. I'm a mixed martial artist who's been competing professionally for over nine years. I'm the first Canadian to win the famed reality show, The Ultimate Fighter. I'm also the first sanctioned cannabis athlete in professional sports. My next fight will be in British Columbia as I look to validate my therapeutic use exemption for cannabis in competition and set precedent not only for myself, but all other athletes. My next fight will not only be in the cage, but also to knock cannabis out of the prohibited list in athletics. Mixed martial arts by its very definition is a combat sport that pulls from the many different fighting styles and techniques for complete competition. As an athlete who started later than most, I've always looked at myself as a blank canvas and a forever student. Started really working with Elias last year around June. He contacted me, wanted to change his game after the UFC there a little bit, uh, trying to get a little more aggressive. So with wrestling, it's uh, very aggressive. Um, it pushes Elias to not back up like he has maybe in the past and to always go forward, be like tenacious. And that's just what a wrestling mindset is. Despite the many challenges we all lived through during 2020, I stayed focused with my training through hard work and discipline with one focus on my mind, to be a more complete fighter. Preparing for a fight is a grueling routine. It involves training every day, twice a day, for an hour to two hours at a time, with everything coming together for sparring, which is each Saturday. That's 10 sessions involving kickboxing, boxing, getting punched, kicked, lift, thrown, and having to lift very heavy things in between. The reward I get for all my hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears, is through sparring, where I take everything I learn each and every week and put it to the ultimate test, and that way become ready for fight night. Elias got two major strengths, right? One is that he learns exceptionally fast. That's how he's able to evolve so fast in the MMA game. But the, his biggest competitive advantage is his mental game. He's got that, you know, Spartan warrior lineage. And we, for this camp, we've doubled down on his, on his mental game. So technical skill, it's just, it, it, it takes such a back seat to the mental game because at this level, your cognitive performance is what makes or breaks you. That's his, his major strength. Outside of the gym, I love running. It's a way for me to both mentally and physically get ready for my fights. I medicate with cannabis and go on epic runs. In doing so, I can push my cardio. I can push my conditioning and I can build my will to win, the will to dominate my opponent. I first became aware of the benefits of medical cannabis through my coach, who had been a patient for many years. It was during our travels when he did not have access to his medical cannabis and was forced to take opioids and painkillers that I saw the toll it took on him firsthand. Fast track to my own injuries, which all started in a previous life as a semi-pro skateboarder in which I broke my hand and had two breaks and four fractures that needed a bone graft to repair, which all resulted in subsequent nerve damage. Then compound the many years of mixed martial arts training and competing in which my bilateral neuropathy developed and became what it is today. When discussing my medical condition of bilateral neuropathy with my doctor, we decided that cannabis was the best medicine for me with the least amount of side effects as both patient and athlete. My biggest challenge was getting around the outdated stigma surrounding cannabis and the fact that it's illegal and banned in professional sports. The biggest hurdle was getting the documentation together to prove my medicine was medicine. When competing in the US, I applied for a therapeutic use exemption. It was an uphill battle because the United States Anti-Doping Agency looks at cannabis as a Schedule One drug. Therefore, there's no medical property, and I was not able to argue the same medical cannabis rights afforded to me as a Canadian in Canada. However, now competing in Canada, I was able to apply for a therapeutic use exemption through the British Columbia Commission. They not only recognized my therapeutic use exemption, but also my fundamental right to medicate as prescribed by my doctor and afforded to me by my Charter of Rights and Freedom. This was the first time a therapeutic use exemption was approved in the North American Commission system or any governmental body in the sports world. During my time competing in the US, I wasn't able to use my medicine as prescribed by my doctor. And that change in routine forced me to change my fighting style, no longer being able to push myself because of the competitive disadvantage I have not being able to use my medicine. 
no longer the grinder who was looking for a finish, I became a point fighter that was looking to intelligently win a fight. And there was criticism because of that. Fast track to my last fight in Ontario, where cannabis isn't considered a prohibited substance that they test for, I was able to medicate all through training and up to my last fight. The results spoke for themselves. I got a devastating win over a great opponent. The Spartan! Over the last decade or so, mixed martial arts has become a sport. And in doing so, sports nutrition has been very vital to the top athletes. When I do have a fight, the last month or so, I'm chipping away at carbohydrates. And what that does is it switches my fuel source from a carbohydrate to healthy fats and puts me closer and closer in ketosis. My diet primarily consists of nuts, avocados, almonds, healthy fats, all kind of blended in giant salads, chock full of protein like chicken, shrimp, and other lean meats. And I can take my body from 210 to 185 in a couple of weeks. And you adding now in water loading, where you're adding as much water as possible, roughly about 10 liters or so, uh, about a week out, and you're essentially filling your bladder like a balloon, and when you pull the water source, the balloon empties. And that, compounded with your ketosis, allows you to cut the weight that I'm able to do. Now having over 20 professional fights, my body essentially knows the routine. It may not know I'm having a fight, but it knows I'm doing that thing that I always do before I compete. Another aspect of my medical cannabis routine that goes hand in hand with my diet is my use of raw cannabis. It is a vital ingredient with all the other ingredients that I use in my daily smoothies. And it allows me to harness the benefits of cannabis with all the anti-inflammatory properties and none of the psychoactive components. My medical cannabis use and dosage is very much a day-to-day -day process. Every morning I wake up and see how I feel and adjust and modify my intake based on what my body needs. For instance, I usually start with a tincture, a one-to-one. -one. Herb Angels has one that allows me to both harness the CBD and THC. CBD is the anti-inflammatory component and THC is the pain management component. Then, as mentioned before, I usually follow up with a raw cannabis smoothie diet. Again, harnessing the anti-inflammatory properties of cannabis with none of the psychoactive component. Then I'm off to training. Training with Elias has been awesome. Like I said, he's uh, you know competed at the highest level multiple times, ultimate fighter winner, competing for one of the biggest and best organizations out there in terms of MMA. Um, really helped uh, turn my game up in the wrestling side and uh, some of the things that I was lacking in my career before, um, which is high intensity, high, high pressure of the wrestling world. And uh, it's been just a pleasure and, and really taken my game to the next level. And depending on how hard a training session is and how any of you know, my condition or any injuries are, there I medicate with cannabis through flour. And I do so with a vaporization. That is the best way for me, both as patient and athlete, to intake cannabis as quick as possible and the healthiest way possible, because there's no combustion. Then, from there, I'm usually going into some type of form of recovery, whether it's stretching, whether it's massage, any way to kind of break down and kind of recover, and then go into my next session. Again, seeing how my body feels, I'll medicate with cannabis through vapor and flour, in the evening, I'll apply certain topicals. Again, from Herb Angels, they, they have different types of um, topicals that allow me to apply the cannabis directly onto my uh, affected areas, and then you know working through my body and feeling it. And in the evening, just before I go to sleep, I'll medicate with Indica that allows me to focus on the pain management, go to sleep, rest, recover, and start a brand new day. After I make history in the province of British Columbia as the first sanctioned cannabis athlete in the world, I have my sights set on the US, specifically California. The process has already started. My lawyer has handed in my application for a therapeutic use exemption. And once approved, the process will allow other athletes from the US to apply for their own therapeutic use exemption in California in ways they wouldn't be able to do on their own. And then, once they're approved, they can take it to different jurisdictions all over the US. 
My development as a professional mixed martial artist and cannabis advocate is a uniquely Canadian experience. As Canada has long recognized the medical benefits of cannabis, but more recently, taking an extraordinary step of legalizing it nationwide. Additionally, Canada is a hotbed for mixed martial arts, both in its fan base, but also producing some of the best fighters to ever do it. It is a true honor to represent Canada each and every time I step into the cage. And for my next fight, as a trailblazer for medical cannabis rights, not only for myself, but all other athletes.